What foster parents learn in training is supplemented by a wealth of community resources, support, and tools needed to provide appropriate care. Clark County provides a list of about 400 agencies and organizations that can help foster parents deal with developmental, behavioral, emotional, therapeutic, social, advocacy, legal, and bureaucratic issues. Healthcare, food, shelter, housing, transportation, employment, education, recreation, and insurance are among the topics for which services and counseling are available. Peggy's Attic is a popular service. Foster parents are welcome to select children's clothes, toys, and school supplies for free. And WIC is a special supplemental food program for women, infants, and children. Foster parents can also support each other. The Clark County Foster and Adoptive Parent Association has more than 200 members. It's important to have that network as a foster parent myself um, to see that a lot of times you hit those challenges and don't know what to do or who to call. Um, and so it's kind of a clearing house, a one central location to where somebody can contact us through the association and say, okay, this is my challenge, this is my problem, what do you suggest, where do I go? So if we can help alleviate that frustration, hopefully we can maintain our foster parents and help them to have a positive experience because it's much easier to maintain our foster parents than have to try to keep training new ones. But we take an approach even to expand out their um, things like relationship training. Um, working on spouse relationships because when you do fostering it affects your whole family. You Sometimes people think you're kind of living this little vacuum and you're a foster parent. Well if you have anyone else in your home you are a foster family and the dynamics affect everyone in that home. Sometimes foster parents come to rely on their own network of friends, neighbors, and co-workers. Our network that we've set up has been just phenomenal in allowing us to continue because there have been times where it's like I can't do this anymore and our friends have come to our rescue and said hey how can we help? We find great comfort in our community and our, our role with our children is to get our children in the community and be part of the community and the community wants them and, and I think that's another misnomer of, of foster children is that well they must have all these problems and we've actually had parents that have said well, don't hang out with that child because that's a foster child. We feel like we're breaking all those uh, barriers. One of the creative resources available to Clark County foster parents is a special hair care class. Children of different and even the same ethnicities as their foster parents may not have the same hair texture, but taking the hair care class can change a feeling of inadequacy into a sense of accomplishment for both the foster parent and the child. I was speaking with a, a foster parent who is also who was also a foster child at one point, and she shared with me uh, she's an African American female, and her foster parents were Caucasian, and she was in their care for several years, some 12 plus years, and she said for her, I'm just quoting what she said. She said it was a nightmare. Uh, how she felt about going outside the house. She said she frequently wouldn't go outside. She didn't want to play because she would be teased concerning how her hair looked. She said that she never took school pictures because uh, she didn't want to have memories of her hair being out of place. She said that after several years, her foster parent took some classes and started getting professional hair care for her hair. And she said that her overall demeanor completely changed as a result of having her hair uh, done in a matter what she felt good about. Her academic performance improved. She got involved with extracurricular activities. Uh, she was enjoying the compliments that she received. And she said she went and had glamour shots done after she got her, got her hair done. Foster parents and foster children come in all colors of love. What might be an issue or concern for adults isn't necessarily an issue for the children in their care. I'm reminded of uh, a young child who I think summed it up best. Uh, this was a Caucasian female who uh, had an African-American mother, and they were shopping at a local store. And while in line at the grocery store, at the checkout, the uh, foster child wanted to go to another aisle to find a candy item that was not in her aisle. So she asked her mother if she could look a couple aisles down for the candy item. Mother said, fine, that's no problem. So the little girl went and she looked down the aisle for the other candy item. And she couldn't find it. And so she said, well, mom, I don't see it in this aisle. Can I go to another aisle and look? And she said, okay. And so she found her item. She's like, mom, I, I found it. 
And while she was in the aisle, another little girl uh, saw her speaking with her mother and said, she's not your mom, she cannot be your mother, she's black. And she said, kind of gave her a, a duh expression, don't you know, children and mothers come in all colors of love. And I think that that pretty much summed up what the whole experience is about. It's not about ethnicity or race or gender. It's about the love, the support, and the care that can be shared. Loving foster and adoptive relationships have no boundaries. There was a, a young teenager who was uh, going through an adoption placement with his soon-to-be new dad. And in that, he had questions about, what's going to happen with my name? Am I going to be required to change my name? And his father told him, that's completely up to you. And he said, well, I know my last name is going to change, but I'd like, I'd like to have my first name change as well. And so his father was a little perplexed because he thought that he was speaking of a last name change. And I'll just say that uh, dad's name is Robert Smith. And son said, well, I, I know my last name is going to be Smith, but because of the, the attachment that had been formed with his father and the son, he also wanted to have his first name. So in other words, he wanted to become Robert Jr. Robert Smith Jr. Are you willing, able, and ready to selflessly step up to the plate and reward yourself in a program of tremendous benefit to the community? We understand that foster parents may be um, sort of concerned about, you know, are they doing the right thing? Are they, do, are they, you know, implementing everything they learned in training? And are they doing everything just perfect and just right? And, and we in the agency have realistic expectations that foster parents um, are going to sort of grow into this role. Whether it's support, whether it's being a mentor, whether it's being uh, a friend, whether it's drying a tear, whether it's being an encourager, there's so much that there is to give. And many foster parents have lamented that they've often gained much more than they have put into the life of a child. Every child, every person deserves to be loved and attached to someone. And if you could be that person to love and attach to that child, you're making a difference. That it's always a child that's out there that needs love and help and stuff like that. And if they could do it, then I would recommend that they do it because it's a beautiful thing. We bring them into our heart, our house. Um, they truly, <laughs> they become family. And. Um, when you bring them in, it, it, it just it grows on you. It's something that you can't uh, not do. Call 702-455-0181, and we will mail you an information packet that provides an overview of the foster care program and includes the latest orientation schedule. At the orientation, you will be provided with more details in order for you to make an informed decision about becoming a foster parent. If you are ready to make this commitment, we need you, and we thank you.